Hello, I'm Andy Rash, the technical trainer for DMAG Cranes and Components. Today's video is about the chain set that's found on the DC chain hoist models. This is one of a series of videos, I hope you've tuned into the other ones, on the DC details. The chain set is the upper chain guide, the lower chain guide, a grease cover, the pocket wheel, I've already taken the fasteners out so I could show you the chain peeler device, and the chain itself. So now let's look at those in more depth from a perspective of what we have to do for maintenance and inspection. First we'll take a detailed look at the upper chain guide that surrounds the pocket wheel. There was a revision in around 2018 where plates were added to the sides of the plastic pieces for reinforcement. But the top position is a critical inspection area because it keeps the chain in the pocket wheel pocket. If that were to break and that pressure wasn't there and that were allowed to jump, the chain could slip through and over the pockets and drop the load. So normally this is put together with screws that go through it as an assembly. I've taken this one apart already to be able to show the internal pieces. The internal pieces of the two halves of the guide include a chain peeler at the bottom that actually causes the chain to leave the pocket wheel and go down into the chain container. One of the reasons that the top of the upper chain guide would break and blow out is if the hole in the top of the chain container is blocked and there's nowhere for the chain to go. The pocket wheel acts as a positive pump for the chain links. This is held on in the chain hoist itself under the grease cover by a circlip to the output shaft from the gearbox. So simply inserting 90 degree nose snap ring pliers and removing the large C-clip allows this assembly to come off its shaft and come loose. But you must also remove the lower chain guide from the bottom of the hoist and the lower chain guide is held on by socket head cap screws. The lower chain guide has the openings for the chain where it's pulled into the pocket wheel and then pushed out of the pocket wheel into the chain container. It also has two holes for the micro switch limits for lifting and lowering. In the chain container there is a chain stop which will, when you get to the end of travel, come up and strike the bottom plate and actuate the lowering limit. When you're lifting, the bottom block will be drawn up into the lower chain guide, will actuate the lifting limit switch. Let's take a closer look at the chain. Each link in a chain has a weld that creates the link and closes it. On other brands, many of them publish a direction for the chain link to be turned in relation to the pocket in the pocket wheel. But the DMAG pocket wheel has a relief where the weld area would be, so it's really not important for the direction of the chain link. In fact, putting it inward toward the pocket wheel when you're doing the reaving could be beneficial as if the link were to crack, likely would happen near the weld and the pocket itself keeps it compressed together so it doesn't open. Chains should be lubricated upon startup of a chain hoist. In fact, the chain hoist is supplied with a tube of grease with a nozzle. The intent is that you will squirt grease through the port on the upper chain guide to add the grease to the chain while running it. On smaller hoists, that distributes the grease well enough to get to the contact point areas link to link. But it should also 
always be verified. It doesn't matter what model you have. Make sure that the link-to-link -link contact area is receiving grease. Otherwise, you have a double hacksaw effect happening if metal-to-metal -metal links are touching. The lack of grease will escalate the amount of wear. The lower chain guide has some serrations on it, and this indicates it is a more modern one, and the more modern ones seem to have a little more thickness to them that closes the air gap between the spacing of the top of the plate to the bottom of the upper chain guide. This eliminates the chance of a chain link going crooked and hanging up at the inlet to the plastic upper chain guide. Having one go crossways there would create a problem that could crack part of the upper chain guide. So part of the inspection process is the check these plus sign openings on your lower chain guide. Chain as it's used will wear out as the leading edge comes in contact with the pocket wheel. So they're aware to both of the items. That's why the chain set provides all new items, upper chain guide, pocket wheel, chain, and lower chain guide. So that when you replace it, all the potential wear items start fresh. Chain can also stretch. So one of the key inspections is to check the stretch of chain. Basically the allowable amount is nominal size plus one and a half percent measured over 11 chain lengths. If you take a DMAG chain you want to use the DMAG book for getting the value for the length of 11 lengths you want to make sure that you're measuring over 11 links to compare your values to what the book would publish. There's also a special stretch gauge that DMAG manufactures, and I'll show you that here. The chain stretch gauge is made of an aluminum bar with pre-drilled holes. They're labeled and with two measuring pins. You pick the correct hole based on your chain size, the distance between the two pins on the gauge represents 11 links plus the allowable 1.5% stretch dimension. So if we insert this at several places in the working segment of the chain and check the distance between the beginning and the end of 11 links. So if we touch one of the pins as we're doing at the top pin, we shouldn't touch the bottom pin, there should be an air gap. So this chain between those 11 links has not stretched to the maximum amount yet. Take several readings throughout the working part of the chain. Here's a tip for everyone. Many times to positively start the chain feeding into the container, they will allow four or five links beyond the chain stop. If you take the chain stop and allow 11 links to hang beyond it, you always have a reference for measuring the nominal 11 link distance. When inspecting chain, please also remember to take a moment and inspect your buffers that are on the chain because some of them contain actuating surfaces built onto the bumper for actuating the limit switches. In this case, this plastic surface here should be checked and make sure there's no divot where the switch is oriented. These also can get crushed and can get dry rotted or blow apart from being squeezed too hard. So please check their condition. Always consult the chart that's in the chain hoist book to make sure the orientation and pieces parts of the buffer are present and in good condition. There are several different buffer orientations that look very similar but should be compared to their published artwork to determine if they're complete and in good condition. Please remember two things about the chain set for a DC model chain hoist. The first thing is the set is comprised of all the wear items and the intent is that when you make a change out to 
change out all the pieces, parts that come your way in the part set. The second thing to remember about the chain set is it was designed to be easily accessed and exchanged by removing the black maintenance cover on the side of the hoist. A large pair of circlip remover pliers will be needed, typically using the 90 degree nose attachment. Take off the grease cover and remove the C-clip. This will allow you to wiggle the pocket wheel off of the shaft. It does float a little bit. The lower chain guide is held on by socket head cap screws, which also need removed, but the assembly of the chain with the upper and lower chain guide can come apart and off of the hoist as an assembly. That concludes our video on the chain set and the DC chain hoist. Please make sure to catch all the videos in our complete series on the DC model chain hoist.